This is the story of the Atlantic lobster. Nova Scotia landed over 51,000 metric tons of lobster worth $570 million in 2014. Lobster is Nova Scotia's most valuable seafood export and is primarily shipped as a live product. Southwest Nova is the capital of the Atlantic lobster industry with a season ranging from late November to the end of May. By far the longest and most productive. The Nova Scotian catch brought in more than $750 million in 2018 about double the $382 million brought in for 2012. This video was originally produced by the Nova Scotia government in the late 1950s. This is an edited version. For copyright reasons, the original audio was replaced in this version. The seasons vary throughout Nova Scotia, but in southwest Nova, it starts during the cooler days of late November. The first day is called Dumping Day. It is the day that most of the traps are set out or dumped. Scenes like this played out all along the coast. Since this video was shot in the late 1950s, the lobster boats are considerably smaller than those used today. Much preparation is needed in the fall months leading up to dumping day. Shown here are local fishermen preparing gear for the coming season. Other off-season activity included summer harvesting of Irish moss and dulse. The original producers of this video chose Delma and Addie Atwood as a typical Cape Island fishing family. They included a school closing at the Vimy Theater to add a little local color to their production. Here are shown some school students marching in front of the Sea View Hotel. Also shown was Hatfield's Market. With a young Ronnie and his parents. Hatfield's market was typical for its time, meat, fresh fruits, and canned goods. Meanwhile, Addie prepares the milk and cream for her butter churn. Back in those days many people had cows so making butter was quite common. Once the butter was produced, she used a mold to shape the butter into a cylinder rather than the block we see today. Often there was a pattern on the top. Never a dull moment for Addie, a garden and a few chickens to tend. It was quite common for local fishermen to meet and exchange stories on best fishing methods. In those days not all implements were store-bought. Here we see a trap hauler spindle made of birch. Lobster buoys were often handmade and painted a specific pattern to denote the owner. Here in Delma Atwood's shed, we see him preparing one of his distinctive buoys with new rope. All part of pre-season preparation. This is a homemade bender where local spruce trees were bent to fit into the base or sill. These bows formed the distinctive shape of the older lobster pots. Knitting was not a lady's job. In those days the men were just as adept at knitting headings for their pots as their wives were at knitting socks. As I said, the fall season was a busy time with all hands building or repairing pots. Back in the earlier days, lobster pots were all handmade, usually being built at each fisherman's shack. Fish shacks dotted the landscape then. Besides getting gear ready, there was also the chore of maintaining the Cape Islander lobster boat. This boat was a mainstay in Southwest Nova. Here we see Delma Atwood attending to his gear. Meanwhile in other parts of the province the lobster season is in full swing. Summer seasons are quite different from that of stormy and rugged southwest Nova. Nevertheless many practices were very similar. Northern boats were smaller and less suited for stormy winter weather. However setting out the pots was done in a very similar manner to Southwest Nova practices. While fishermen in Southwest Nova might envy these guys who work on a warm summer day. 
The catches and prices are considerably better during the fall and winter season in which our local fishermen make their living. With the pots in the water and the buoys bobbing in the tide, the dimming light marks the end of dumping day and the restless wait to haul the pots begins. Morning comes early for these fishermen. Delma checks the skies in hope of moderate weather. All seems perfect for the first day of hauling. Addie was probably up earlier than Delmer and their son. Bright and early, she has a hearty breakfast ready for them. They will need it because it's going to be a long and tiresome day. In any event the two are well fed and eager to get down to their lobster boat at the shore. After their hearty breakfast, the two fishermen leave the house and walk to their wharf nearby. With their lobster boat tied up at his own wharf nearby, Delmer isn't long getting it ready and quickly sets out to tend his traps. It's not long before Delmar comes across other fishermen in the same general locations that he fishes. It is first come, first served when it comes to where to set your pots. This is a powered trap hauler which uses the wooden spindle mentioned earlier in this video. The first hauling day of the season is pretty exciting with all the fishermen hoping for a good catch. Up comes the trap and out with the lobster. Buried or egg-bearing lobster are returned to the sea. Market-sized ones are kept in a crate till the crew return to the dock. The traps are rebated and dumped back for another catch. Here we see another crew steaming from buoy to buoy in the hope of hauling all the traps set the day before. As you can see, it's hard work pulling up hundreds of traps, even with the help of a mechanical trap hauler. But this is all in a day's work for these hardy lobstermen. The catch is measured to ensure a market size. Undersized catches are returned to the ocean, perhaps to catch in another year. Now traps are ready for rebaiting. Bait bags are refilled and attached to a spindle. Then over they go. Back in the 50s and 60s, two traps per buoy was the usual setup. Today many more traps are attached to a long trawl line. Back in those days, wooden plugs were used to prevent the lobsters from injuring each other. Today, harmless rubber bands are used. During the early days of the season, the catches could be quite successful. As the colder winter weather sets in, the catches would decline. At the end of a hard day, they head for port. In this case it's Clark's Harbor. By the way, that's Dewey Nickerson hauling that crate. The daily catches are sold to local buyers, located at the main Kenny Wharf. After weighing, the catch are placed in wooden crates. The crates are in turn stored in large floating cars, where they remain until shipping out to market. The live lobsters will remain in the cold waters of the car, until the regular arrival of a lobster smack from Boston. As you can see, it was a very labor-intensive operation to store fresh lobster in crates, then in cars and finally loaded into a ship for transport to the United States. Finally, off they go, to some fancy Boston or New York restaurant.
Not all catches were shipped abroad. Some were sent to canneries throughout the region. In recent years canneries have been in decline, mainly due to better shipping practices. Live lobster bring a much better price. But let's not forget that it was not only Yankees who enjoyed our catch. Shown here is a good old-fashioned family picnic, and Nova Scotia lobster is the main attraction. Lobster may not be one of the prettiest creatures in the sea, but it surely is one of the most popular. Even today the lobster industry in southwest Nova is the mainstay of the economy. With proper management, let's hope it stays that way. This map shows the various managed lobster districts. As I said earlier, the Southwest Nova District is by far the most prosperous, even with the often nasty winter weather. So it's time to end our story. I hope you enjoyed a short trip back to the 50s and 60s. Times have certainly changed but the lobster reigns as king and Southwest Nova is its kingdom.